tasted like an animal protein cake. But in fairness, they ate it without any condiments or bun. The real story here, however, is what this might mean for the food industry. The team behind the lab patty say that this could potentially be an environmentally friendly way to fight world hunger, but with its current high price tag, oh, how realistic is that? And how do we know if that meat is safe? Joining me now is Michael Moss, investigative reporter for the New York Times and author of the book Salt, Sugar, Fat, How the Food Giants Hooked Us. So, Michael, is this the future of food? The cost is obviously prohibitively high right now, $300,000 to make this pot patty, but is this a realistic option down the line to end world hunger? Well, let's start with the good news here, Jake, which is good you know, news. I heard that the stem cell that they started with actually came from the shoulder of the cow which I thought is where most of your hamburger came from until I came across my trove of internal documents. You know, it turns out that most of the hamburger we get at the grocery store or quicker style restaurants is an amalgam of scraps of meat from slaughterhouses all around the world that are mixed or matched to make the least expensive, least costly hamburger out there, including that product, beef product, that came to be known as pink slime. So at least this, you know, this product is coming just from the shoulder, which is what I thought um, a hamburger always came from. The bad news is that, yes, I think this is one of the first signs of what we're going to see increasingly of what the food industry calls food security, which is, you know, the population of Earth growing so that people will be clamoring not for healthy food, not for Yuck. organic, not locally grown, but increasingly just for calories, protein, put it in your body, get going Yuck. at any cost. And I think that the processed food industry sort of secretly is just, you know, waiting to come to the rescue of us to feed us. How will they be able to, obviously this won't be as much of an issue for people who are starving who will be happy for any food at all, but, but for the rest of us, uh, there seems to be something of an ick factor if just by judging the crew I have here watching uh, the, the report. <laughs> Ew, um, that's and, disgusting. Will they be able to get over that? You know, it's all about taste. I mean, think about meat is the taste comes from fat. And so how they think they're going to add flavorings to this meat without adding lots of fat is, you know, is beyond me. I mean, that's why lean meats are really challenged to have that juicy flavor of marbling that you find in meat. So, so obviously, you know, it's going to come down to flavor for a lot of us besides cost. And obviously, you've got to get that, you know, that, that $300,000 figure down. And, what, down. And, and Michael, what about the, the safety issues? It would seem there, there might be some with this uh, food, meat made in a lab. You know, there are two sides to that, too. So, so, yes, I mean, this falls in the category of scientifically engineered foods. And we've talked about GMOs in the past and how scary those are for people genetically modified organisms. They're going to have to do a lot of convincing the people that, hey, this isn't something that's going to cause health trouble down the road that first we need to log a lot of testing on. But there's another safety aspect with real hamburger. It's called E. coli. And the industry is still cook it out. to make hamburger entirely safe because it's very easy to contaminate it in the slaughterhouse, in the processing process. Fascinating. Michael Moss, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Coming up, the roar of the crowd, the crack of the bat.